Good morning, everybody. Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. Time to stitch with me. Get out your stitching. Have a favorite drink next to you. And let's sit and chat for a little bit. So how are you guys doing today? Ready for a fun weekend? For those of you that haven't entered the weekend yet, some of you have. Some of you are already halfway done with your Saturday, or by the time this gets uploaded, completely done with your Saturday. I love time. It's a timey-wimey thing, as Doctor Who would say. So, I didn't feel like doing anything that I had already started. Actually, I didn't know what I wanted to do for my Stitch With Me, so I asked the question several places in the wonderful world of Facebook. What do you want to see me stitch on? And I gave a list of Jane Marshall or Narnia or Time for Seasons or test stitching my first floral block. And test stitching the floral block one by quite a margin. So here it is. Ta-da! <laughs> Doesn't look like much yet, right? Let me show you the picture, what I'm working on here. So I am starting with this block here. Kind of expand it a little bit. I've removed the background. So the fabric that I'm using is kind of a mottled pinky cream. Um, that you know just a piece that I happen to have in my stash stash it is a 32 count this piece is 76 by 70 stitches so fairly small um, and that's what I'm going to aim for all of them to be so my big conundrum my big the main thing I'm trying to figure out is I mean when you look at the flower I think you can tell that there's a lot of shading, a lot of different colors going on here. I can't work with all those different colors. I would say like in any given petal, there's 50 colors. That's too many. So I've narrowed it down to like six or seven. So my, my test stitching here is to see if these colors flow in an eye-pleasing way to give you the feel for what's going on with the flower. So I'm working on Kind of a petal up here that it kind of is placed different on my black block than what you're seeing here but kind of kind of a petal up in here this this one here um, they are everything is outlined in 938 so I have the outlining done and I'm doing the filling in now when I look at the other you know, I went, in my video, I said I was going to start make this more of an Art Deco type of feel. I decided I was just going to start with the ones that are shown here. And then um, I'll do another set that are Art Deco. This second one, this one here, I'm not sure how much of this detail I'll be able to get. You know, when you get into these smaller regions, it's harder with the block being only so big. Um, it's hard to get all those details. So there's going to be a lot of playing around with things um, to get things to work. But anyways, I'm calling this Floral Medley. The other, the other pieces um, to me look like I might want to outline them in a darker, not that the 938 isn't dark. I don't want to use black. I think that's too stark. I don't want to use 3371 because that's what's used in everything. I might use actually a navy blue. This one seemed to be more of a brown, but I may change that to a navy blue. I don't know whether they all have to be outlined in the same thing or not. I don't know what that yet. But anyway, so my, uh, my test stitch is to see how well these colors blend together. And like I said, I think I have probably, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six colors in the block now. And I do have them kind of, kind of set out, not necessarily in needles yet, but kind of set out ready for me to 
re-thread this needle so I don't spend a lot of time doing that. So like I said, 33 or 32 count fabric just from my stash. I am stitching in hand. Um, I am thrilled to say that these patterns work in Pattern Keeper as well. I was worried that because they are slightly different, they have some different pages in them, that Pattern Keeper might not work, but they do. And in fact, even this one that is not a complete pattern at all, you know, it doesn't have a cover sheet. It has basically the chart and the thread sorter. And I guess the the page that says how much is used in, of each color of floss. So there's a lot basically missing on this chart and this pattern, but Pattern Keeper brought it up with no problems at all. So if you are a Pattern Keeper fan and you thought that maybe it would only be good for full coverage charts. I can tell you that my charts work perfectly in it. And I save my charts off into Dropbox. And then it's really easy, if you have Dropbox on whatever your tablet is, it is really easy to um, bring the charts into Pattern Keeper. All right, so I am just actually marking off what I just stitched. And that is all for that color. So yeah, I um, am going to test a couple petals. I have it all charted. Because, you know, I don't know that I'll really be able to tell on just this one chart how well it's wor working or I'm sorry just this one petal how well it's working I may need to um, I may need to have several petals to really get a feel for whether the shading is working or not it looks good online <laughs> for what that's worth so yeah that will be and I'm, I'm not going to stitch all of this. Um, I'm going to send this, I think, to one of the people that have volunteered to be a model stitcher for me and ask her to stitch it. I'll probably put the chart up in the meantime with the computer-generated picture on the front page. And then once the model is stitched, I'll change that out and upload a new PDF. Nothing else in the PDF will change, so if you um, want to go ahead and get it. It's not like you're missing anything because the P, the front cover doesn't have the stitched model on it. I'm just going with the flow on my patterns. I'm thrilled, absolutely thrilled with the reception of Narnia. People are starting to stitch it. So exciting. I mean, besides the, the test stitchers, the model stitchers that I've asked um, to work on it, and it's just so exciting to see it come to life in, in different colors. In fact, um, I was working with a color combination yesterday on a um, another project that I'm going to leave unnamed because I am all sneaky like that. But anyways, I had kind of a pink similar to this and a gray, say similar to 415 actually maybe the darker one 417 holy cow and I was thinking I've got to tell you guys if anybody likes that kind of color a light pink and a light gray that would be stunning for Narnia in fact if any of you are following the linen and threads if you're doing the linen and threads stitch along the 2021 um even if you aren't, I like being in the group. I'm not doing it this year. It, it looks absolutely lovely, but I just can't with everything else I'm doing. But Kathy Grebachenko, she's um, to Dye House here on FlossTube. I don't know whether she's done a video in a while, but her color combination is a pale pink and a cream on a pale pink 
fabric and it is the most stunning one that I've seen. And I, I keep thinking I've got to design something in that colorway. So again, if you guys are have got Narnia and um, are looking for a color combo and you think that might, that might be up your alley, join the Linen and Threads group. And it's, you know, it's open to anybody. You just have to request to join. You know, to, just to see some of the color combos, look up Kathy's because it is amazing. Just gorgeous. And in fact, that kind of pale, you know, whether it's pink and cream or, or blue and cream, oh my goodness, I think it'd, it'd just be so pretty in anything. So yeah, while I'm designing one thing, my brain is is working on two or three others. I'm still, I'm thinking a lot about the, the tribal ones, the Hawaiian ones. Um, I did get a comment. And this is kind of getting into murky waters here. Somebody commented, and I, I thought it was on my on the YouTube um, video, but then when I went to look for it to respond, it was gone. So I don't know whether she re deleted it or whether it was actually someplace else, and I'm just not remembering correctly, which is certainly a possibility. Um, but anyway, she cautioned me against doing it. There was a, a huge hullabaloo in the knitting world last year over racism and cultural appropriation and um, apparently being a social justice warrior is a bad thing now in some people's minds. You know, you can call me a snowflake. I don't care. I'll wear that badge with pride um, if it means that I'm standing up for other people's rights. But there was a, a huge, um, I mean, it got nasty in the in the knitting world, especially on Instagram last year. Um, and several people's businesses did take a huge hit. Some people just stopped, whether it was a indie dyer, indie um, designer. Um, it, it just got bad, and a lot of people were hurt personally, hurt in a business way. But anyways, this person... Um, made a comment that I need to, you know, maybe think about it a little bit. But in the cross-stitch world, I don't think we have that same kind of mentality. I mean, there's, we have all kinds of different patterns out there for all kinds of different cultures. And I don't see anybody jumping on anybody else's, down anybody else's throat, you know, because of it. So, I don't know, the Hawaiian ones. I'm gonna to talk to the ladies here when we get together this month. Um, but they are something that uh, my creative juices are flowing, so I don't expect that I won't do them. Let's see, 3733, is that this one? You know, that's the problem, I got all these out and I'll have to make sure <laughs> I'm working with the right one. Yeah, that's that one. Um, so yeah. It's the weekend. I don't expect we're going to be doing much um, this weekend. Mike really is going to need to chill. He was so upset yesterday when he came home from work. Um, yeah, it's bad. You know, it's really a shame because when he applied for this job in San Antonio, you know, he agreed that we needed to get off the island. This just isn't the best place for us family-wise. But yet he does, he did really like the job and he knew that he was doing good work here and he was going to miss that. He felt the job in San Antonio and he still feels this way um, would be equally as interesting and certainly um, contribute a lot to what some of what's going on in this country and what we need, but um, he really was enjoying the job here. Well, this new manager has, has totally changed that feeling. He came home yesterday. In fact, yesterday was so bad, um, he had to remove himself from the office. You know, Mike has worked, he's been in the, in the government for 28 years. He's worked with all kinds of different people and all kinds of different managers. And he's had some tough situations to deal with in the past. In fact, he's kind of a pro at writing um, 
what his mother affectionately calls outhouse letters. You know, those kind of letters where you just, you've got a grievance with someone and you let them know about it. Mike, Mike's modus operandi is to write one of those and then to just let the draft sit, you know, to write an email and let it sit for a day or two. And oftentimes the situation resolves itself. He's able to talk the situation out with the person. It turns out it wasn't as bad as he thought, you know, etc., etc. I don't know that he's ever before had to actually leave the office for being so upset and being afraid of what he was going to say. Now, granted, part of it is the stress that he is feeling from this PCS um, and, you know, waiting on news of that. And so that kind of amplifies other things, right? When you're under stress like that. But this was, this is worse than the worst that I've ever seen him. So he went to a different, he had to, had an appointment in a different building anyway. And um, he was able to actually find a work center over there where he could log in and still work, but not being in his office. And there's an internal chat system that they have and the rest of the day just continued to blow up and get worse and worse um, with different things going on. You know, this manager isn't just micromanaging. He isn't just totally reorganizing the office without um, any input from people that have actually done the job and know it well and know the people. This, this manager doesn't even know the people well enough but he's also been, um, you know, so that's frustrating enough, but he has also been apparently um, had three complaints against him in the past for inappropriate behavior towards young women. Only one of them, he's been, he's been reprimanded for only one of them, but that's starting to happen again with another person a new young lady in the Air Force in the office. And um, Mike just feels that up the chain isn't doing anything to help the situation. So basically he can't wait to leave. We did get good news. The PCS is going forward. The HR office, the main HR office back at Fort Meade did approve it. So the paperwork has come back out here. Um, Mike wrote to the HR office here and said, you know, guys, I've got to get out of here. Please make this happen as quickly as possible. So, um, if he didn't have an email back, like I said, he left work early yesterday. He did go and get some work done in this other office and then he left work early. Um, but if he doesn't get an email back today, he's going to call them because the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Boy, my stitches don't look very good. <laughs> I don't like how my stitches look. I guess they're okay. Anyways, I'm really loving the blending so far. What do you think? So what I'm doing here is, let me pull this back over here. Like I said, working on this top one. So it's, it's this petal here. And so you have the kind of peaches blending up to like, see down here you have the, the stronger pinks and purples. So I really like how my peaches and pinks are blending. Now we're going to bring in the more purpley color. And this petal, you know, it, it like I said, this is positioned differently in the square than what you're seeing on that square. So this petal is actually getting kind of cut off up here on the outline of the outside border. But that is okay. Lots of starting and ending of threads though in a little space. But that's okay as well. Show those as done on Pattern Keeper. Let's see, we have three more colors to go. So that goes there. This is the next one, right? Let me see. 
heart, 3608. I just kept them all laying here next to me. 3608. Yep, that's the right one. Um, so, yeah, we'll just, um, I think we'll probably just have a pretty chill weekend. I got some grocery shopping done yesterday, so I don't think we'll even have to do that. Maybe I'll get some sewing done this weekend. I definitely want to get up there in the loft and clean stuff up again. Because <laughs> it's, an, it's another, oh for heaven's sakes, um, it's a mess up there again. Come on, go in there. Um, Mike is hoping since now the, the, he feels like the PCS process can actually start now that this SPF has been finalized, HR has approved the curtailment, um, now the actual PCS process can start. And like I said, that's a matter of several different appointments and then the orders actually getting written. He's hoping that in two weeks, all that will be done. And so that would put us, oh wait, I didn't mark those ones off. Hold on, hold that thought. Um, nope, that, that, this, that. Um, that by the beginning, well, let's see, what is this? It's 21st of February. We may be in San Antonio for the house hunting trip for my birthday. So that would be kind of fun. My birthday is March 12th. Hopefully it'd be like the end of the house hunting trip. <laughs> He's really hoping that in a couple weeks all that will be done and we can make it to San Antonio for the house hunting trip. Um, and that would mean then that end of March, beginning of April, although I don't know that it would even be that long, we'll be moving. He was looking at airfares for um, here to Phoenix for the beginning of April, and they were like $200, $250, $200, something like that on Hawaiian. And that's just insane. So usually it's around five or 600 one way. So 200, yeah, if it happens to fall into that time frame. That's a win. Now the government pays for it all, but you know whatever they set a they set an amount and they ba basically give you that amount. So whatever you don't use, you know, is still yours to keep. So that's pretty good. Getting more into the pinky purples. So yeah. I mean, we're hanging in there for the most part. Hopefully a chill weekend. We had a great time with our friends last week. Visiting from Maryland, they are now home and getting readjusted to life back on the East Coast. All right, so next. 718, I think that's this one up here. Um, that's a much stronger pink, right? So we're fading from the pinks into the purples, so. Um, let's see what else is happening. More sneak peeks. So I pre-ordered four from Teresa Cobert. There's a couple of um, Brenda Gervais that I definitely want. I think I'm going to wait until I've been seeing all the sneak peeks both on Instagram and Julie Col Gulf Coast Stitchers site. So if you are looking to pre-order, Julie's is a great site to do it. Gulf Coast, G-U-L-F Coast Stitcher. Um, so she has everything listed as a pre-order on there. I decided I'm not going to pre-order the Brenda Gervais just yet because um, 
I asked Julie about, because since I already have one order in, I asked her if I place a second order, you know, is she is she going to be combining them? And she said she tried to do that last year and it was just a nightmare, which I can totally understand that it would get kind of crazy with, you know, having to refund and all that. Because it, as a pre-order, you're, you're paying for it up front so that she has the money at market to buy them. Um, but that means you're paying for shipping as well. And so if I place a second order, I'm, play, I'm paying for shipping twice. And I don't want to do that. Um, so I'll wait. Maybe I'll get them um, from the store in San Antonio. Who knows? It's not like I'm going to be doing them anytime soon. So, But I'm, I'm happy I got the Teresa Kogut ones. Those were the ones that really struck a chord with me. So we'll see. But yeah, I encourage you to check out Julie. Wait, I did something wrong. Hold on. Wrong place. I know, you would never know that if I didn't say it. So I'm also working on the Bloomtopia Sal. The third release of that comes out pretty soon. Well, actually, I guess next next Friday? Next Thursday? I don't remember the date. I'm enjoying that. My time for seasons, I've been working on that a couple days this week. Narnie, I'm kind of going back and forth between, um, between time for seasons and Narnia. The time for seasons is a nice break as always with the big chunks of color so I feel like I'm getting a lot done. Narnia is just oh, I'm loving to seeing that come to life. And then there's this. <laughs> so those last two little stitches are a purple. 552. So there's not a whole lot of the other colors in here you know, fading into the purple to get a feel for it. So that's why I need to do more petals so that I really get a feel for how this is going to look. And, you know, this is one of the things that my original intention was to send off to somebody else, like the test stitchers to do. But I think there's a certain point where first that I need to do it. You know, I don't know that a test stitcher will be able to understand exactly what I'm looking for. Of course, I guess I just have them stitch it and then I can look at what they've stitched and, you know, see see how it looks. I don't know. Like I said, I'm still just figuring this all out. But it's also because, you know, as I'm designing it, it's I get so excited to see how it's going to stitch up that I can't resist playing. All right, so 552 is getting added in here. I do have the blinds closed, so I don't know whether it looks dark here to, or not to you. If you're getting a full feel for how the colors are looking, I think you are. Um, of course, just as I sat down, I am doing the loop start on some of these, by the way. If I had threads cut that were too small for the loop start, I just went with those. That's not coming down. Shoot. Um, of course, just as I sat down to start this, after I got everything gathered up, the sun came in here really blindingly, so I had to close the blinds. And of course, now that I'm started, the sun is behind clouds. Oh well, such is life, right? have to do more petals to see you get a feel for it I don't think it's bad it's just hard to get a feel for what that is really supposed to be I guess love the blending down here though I think that works really well 
So, anyway, stay tuned for more of that. I haven't even gotten a shower yet today. I was so anxious to get this going. So, um, yeah, I'll probably get a shower and then spend the rest of the day sitting here working on this. After I get the video uploaded, of course. These ones don't take a lot of editing. All right, guys. I think this is gonna work. We'll see. It'll look better with all the other stuff. I also have to see if I need to add more curve to some of the petals. Again, curving on in a small area is a little harder, but I'm going to work more with what I have and see what I think. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear it. So each of these is going to be a separate design. Um, nine of them. I'm going to call it Floral Medley. So this is Floral Medley 1. The Art Nouveau one will be Nouveau Medley. Um, and then we'll just see as I go on what, what all I come up with. You know, what other styles. Maybe I'll have a winter medley and have a bunch of different snowflakes with different colors. That's an idea. Hmm. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any suggestions. And let me know if you'd be interested in being a model test stitcher for me. Um, you know, these are going to be coming out pretty fast and furious. <laughs> I seem to have a real flow once I get started designing. Um, and I think I can use more. So I would love to welcome you to my team. I think that is all for today. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I hope you have a wonderful day. If it's the end of your day, I hope you have a wonderful evening or a wonderful tomorrow. And I look forward to chatting with you both here and online. Don't forget Puerto Rico, my, my charity chart is still out there. It's going to remain out there, but you know, I look forward to seeing what I can donate to the charity. Spring Flourish, it is free for another eight days. So um, don't miss out on that one. And again, I appreciate your support. I appreciate your enthusiasm for my designs. And I appreciate chatting with you all over the place. So I will talk to you guys probably on Monday. I do have um, thoughts about my basics of cross stitch video for Monday. I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go, but there will be one. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I love you and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.